Okay, so I got uh, another video here, and I, I guess I'm cheating a little bit. I went digging and I found my old um, CRKT boxes uh, for these CRKT knives. So I'm going to do these two knives at the same time. This is the um, CRKT M16 14SFG. And we got the M21 14SFG. I'm pretending that this is an unboxing, but if if I was to be completely honest with you, this knife is only this knife's a couple of months old, and there's a little bit of a story behind it. While this knife is the M21 is probably about 11 years old, if I had to guess, anywhere from 10 to 12 years old, if I had to guess. So let's go ahead and um, I guess unbox these and I will start with this guy. So I really don't remember how old this box is. This box could be a few months old or it could be about five years old. Um, this knife came to me. Um, I ordered this knife a long time ago. By a long time ago, I mean in 2013 or so I lost my M21 and decided to buy a, a, another one and then I found my other one so then I had two but there's some slight differences between the two now my M16 um, developed a bearing problem there's a bearing in there and that bearing decided that um, it was going to wear out and it wore a flat spot and there was a lot of friction on opening and closing that knife. I contacted CRKT and they said, send it to us. If we can't fix it, we'll send you a new knife. And that's what they did. They sent me a new knife. So here it is. I've barely carried this, um, but it's an excellent knife. I have jammed it into some wooden posts I was using this um, to hold something up. I don't remember what it was. And um, I was using this as a shelf, essentially. I jammed this into like a, I don't know, a fence post or something and laid a piece of wood across it. So you can see I've torn up the paint a little bit. Is it still sharp? It should be. Maybe it's not. I didn't think I used it that much. Maybe I used it more than I thought I did. It's pretty dull. It's not... I don't think I cut a single hair there. Okay. Um, so, you know, what can I say about this knife? Well, this knife was a replacement. Um, as I said, th this is just a few months old. And I've, I thought that I very, very seldomly carried it, but it looks like I did. Um, and this knife was a replacement for this knife, which I lost. But we're going to go ahead and unbox this fully. I saved the box. So here's, here's what the box looks like. It's a, it's a plain black cardboard box, which is perfectly fine by me. Uh, of course, we save for those that serve. They're, I'm guessing they're marketing this towards law enforcement, military personnel. You know, if you look at ads for this this knife, it's always some military-looking dude wearing camo. Um, so, um, we'll just show every edge of the box, I guess. Okay, so that's that. What's in the box? Now... Keep in mind that this box might be from 2013. It could be from late 2019, early 2020. Because it could, this box, I really don't know if I kept the original. I'm not even sure why I kept the box. I, tend, I don't tend to keep the boxes, but I kind of do keep the boxes for my cool stuff. Maybe I classified this as cool a long time ago. So anyways, we got this um, little brochure telling you about how great the auto locks system is. 
That's the locking mechanism. We'll get to that in a moment. Showing you how it works. Pull down the red dots. Blah, 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 blah. Showing you how it works on the inside. I mean, that's pretty much it. I've had, I've had mine apart. Or at least I've had... Yeah, I have had them apart cleaning them and stuff. I'm trying to figure out why that bearing... Trying to figure out the problem that I saw was the bearing. And the bearing was like pressed into the blade or something. So there's that. We have a little catalog that says new for 2011. Um, it's very possible that this is my old original box. So that's kind of cool to see the uh, old knives that were kind of, that were a new cool thing in 2011. That's, uh, to me, that's one of the fun parts about these unboxings. And I know some folks are like, get to the knife. Well, I mean, I don't know. I like this little stuff. So I guess I show the little stuff that you don't think about. A lot of people just toss this into the trash. Oh boy, this is huge. Just in case somebody finds this useful, I will pan through the whole thing. It'll be up to you to hit pause and rewind. That's that's my line. That's the line that I like. I guess they're showing law enforcement there. Shenanigan. trying to give every section a bit of focus and time and without glare from the lighting. I've read up on what knives the military and law enforcement actually use, and, but I don't absorb a lot of that information in, in one ear, out the other. Huh, I didn't know they made gray versions of these, the titanium. So that's one side. Oh man, I'm sorry. I, I got to do it. Um, looks like. What are they doing with this? Some of it's upside down. I'm gonna try to show it all. I still feel like I should keep this as much as I'm tempted to throw it out. Just to kind of capture. It might be kind of cool in 20 or 30 years to whip this out and see what CRQT was up to, you know, back in 2011. So that's that. Um, I've got this other knife here. This is the M21. I couldn't get it back in the package. I don't know why, um, but I'll, I'll just go ahead and show you the box. Okay, so there we are. Go ahead and open it up. And there's the knife. And this is hardly, I, this is where I'm cheating. This is hardly a, um, an unboxing when you consider that I've had this thing for 10 or 12 years. But I have not done a recent video on these knives. Um, I do have another YouTube channel, and I did do a, um, I guess, a video talking about this knife, and probably back in 2011, 2010. Looks like my pocket clip screws are work work loose. Um, I've always had pretty good luck with this knife with the exception of the bearing failing and it, that could have been my fault. I may have ran it dry. Um, th this knife had been extremely stiff here recently and I lubricated it and it's firing just like new. Okay. So why, what makes this knife so great? Well, hang on one second. I'll be right back. I just realized I didn't get everything out of the box. 
I don't know. I, I realize everyone's probably going nuts with me covering every little thing in the box. This is NRA membership application. I wonder if there's a date a date on this document. So that's in there. We got this little brochure. Talking about the locking system. I guess we don't need to show that again. Mini catalog. Um, the other one had a, a year on it. I think, yeah, new for 2011. This one does not say the year. We got another catalog. Uh, to whom I may concern, we recommend using blue Loctite as a general maintenance and screws to keep them secure. Um, I ran this knife through the washer and dryer and I lost some screws and I contacted CRKT and said hey I'd like to purchase some screws and I may have even lost a pocket clip and CRKT asked me for my address and I gave it to them and they said okay it's on its way for free they sent me a, a whole new screw kit and pocket clip for free I thought that was pretty pretty fantastic. I really don't want to show this catalog. It was in the box. We're not going to zoom in as much. As good as cameras are these days. I'm assuming if anybody wants to look at that they could hit pause and zoom in. I always thought that was kind of a wise um, demographic to market to the EMR emergency response folks. I kind of like that orange handle. So that's, we're moving through this one a lot quicker. And same thing, some of it's upside down. And same thing, I'm just going to try to give every square inch a bit of focus without my fingers or the reflection from the light. If anybody wants to look at that. And this section is upside down for whatever reason. Okay. What is this? Why was there two catalogs in this one? Maybe that's why I couldn't get it back in the box. Well, we can see that we don't need to cover that. Um, and a pocket clip. And I don't know... You know what? I think I just figured out why I have two catalogs. There's a pretty good chance that they stuffed, when I asked for the um, rebuild kit, they might have given me a couple of pocket clips, a catalog, and then told me, hey dumbass, use Loctite the next time, and stuffed it in a bag and shipped it to me like so. Stuck it, you know, in an envelope. That's probably what happened. That's probably why I have two catalogs. But I don't know, don't know for sure. And I have another knife on the way um, that needs a pocket clip. And this 
pocket clip is going to go in that. I've got another, it's another CRKT um, knife that's going to be here soon. So I'm guessing the knife is actually in this package. So we'll stuff this back on down in there. Oh boy, 15 minutes and we haven't even looked at, hardly looked at the knife or knives. So to me, these are these knives are essentially the same thing. Um, you'll notice that the one I've carried for almost a decade is in great shape. It's smooth. It's much smoother to the touch than this one. I mean, every edge has just been slightly worn. You can see even the G10 handles are almost shiny it, it, in the camera and this is matte uh, I'm guessing I've just worn that smooth now one thing that I noticed with these G10 a lot of folks may not know this I didn't know this when I first got these is that trying to get it to focus uh, You can see the layers of this handle material. It's not just one layer, it's multiple layers stacked on top of each other. I have no idea how they make that, but I like it. Um, it's grippy and light. Um, it's also not lost its color. If we were to go back to the one from uh, you know 10 years ago, you'll see it's still black except for the pocket clip, it's slightly worn. So this would be a pretty good uh, before and after of the two, the two knives here. You know, whereas I've, I've got this cheap junk Chinese, I guess these are made in China too, um, Atomic Defender OTF, and I've barely carried this. I bet I've only carried this for a total of maybe three weeks. And it's done nothing more than open a few packages every day. Um, the paint comes right off. Look at that. Not that it super bothers me, but it makes it look like the knife's 20 years old. And this thing m might be three months old. I don't know. This is fairly recent. A fairly recent purchase. Okay. We're just looking at this guy. Um... He's still in pretty good shape. So, you know, what can I say about it? Well, it has serration. I guess they call this a VEF serration. I'm not a big fan of the serrations on any blade. I don't know. I don't cut a lot of rope. Um, I, I don't know how often people are cutting rope, but it seems like there for a while all knives had the serration on it. Like everybody was just cutting ropes all day or something. I don't know. Um, I don't know how to sharpen a knife. I'm not, I, well, I kind of know how, but I'm not good at it. And I'm definitely not good at serrations. So, um, we do have a thumb stud. So you can use that thumb stud to whip this blade out. Um, you also have this guy here you can use as a flipper. And we also have one over here so you can wave it out of your pocket so that gets caught on your pocket this was my introduction to waving a knife that was I don't remember the moment when I discovered this but that's when I saw it and said I've got to have that so essentially what happens is when this is down in your pocket and you pull it out of your pocket you push it back against the back of your pocket and it gets caught and then opens okay I guess I can give a, a quick demonstration most folks probably know exactly already what I'm talking about. So the knife's here, you draw it, and instead of pulling it straight up, you uh, push it back, and, it, and it's ready to go. And to me, that's faster than an OTF. That's, that's much faster than an OTF. So the, that was the main selling point to me. Um, it's pretty good, pretty good size. And it also has, I guess, what people call quillions. These guys here will serve as like a handguard. 
like so. I don't know why everyone doesn't want a knife like this. This is this is perfect. Um, when I'm done going through all my phases with my knives, I predict I'm going to fall back on this. I've seen some people talk in various comments on message boards and whatnot that these are not reliable. I don't know why. I'm not sure where people are getting that. Um, I don't work. I'm not in the military. I'm not a police officer. I just open packages and carry for self-defense. And it's perfect for that. Um, you'll see that we have holes in the handle. Those are, I guess we have four on the top and three on the bottom. You'll see we have our pivot point, the regular standard screwdriver here. You'll notice that we have three holes up here. Those three holes are so that you can move the pocket clip wherever you like. You can move it tip up, tip down, right hand, left hand. So I think that's kind of a cool touch. I believe the thumb studs might act as a stop against the frame of the knife. I believe that's how the blade knows, knows where to stop. The lock, I've seen, I remember seeing where people talked about this and they had a hard time with this lock saying it was too difficult. And it could be that I've carried the knife for 10 years that it's not difficult at all. Um, you pull down on this guy and that allows you to move the liner down. So I'll get in there and show you, I guess. You can see this camera does an excellent job. It shows how filthy my stuff is. You can see it moves that bar, that little piece that's been up at 90 degrees, it's moved out of the way so that the liner lock can now come down and the blade can come back. And we do have um, a detent there holding it in position. Um, the pocket clip is a good length. I like it. I've always liked this pocket clip. A lot of times I feel like I feel the need to modify the pocket clips. And on this knife, I've never had any reason to. Um, for example, on these. Uh, uh, cold steel pocket clips. I think they're a tad short and a tad stiff. So I always have to bend them up a little bit. Uh, so the, I guess you could say that we, um, you know, what else can I say? As you can see, we've have, is our pivot point? Here's a screw. There's a screw coming over to the other side. Same thing. We got our pocket clip and our two screws and then our pivot point there. Um, as you can see the shape of the blade. You can see the grind there, what they're doing with that. I guess you would call this a swedge. This is generally referred to as a spear point. You could tell it's not sharp the way I'm handling it. I'm not gonna cut myself on this guy. But it will open packages just fine Um, one day I may get good at sharpening knives. Um, this knife is exactly the same in every way, um, except the tip of the blade. It's that Tonto edge, the Tonto tip, I guess, rather. I do want to say that this knife had a slightly shorter pocket clip. And they've now added uh, paint CRKT. Other than that, it seems like it's exactly the same. I went to the website before I decided to shoot this video just to look up specifications on it. And I guess it's the um, that metal that the blade is made out of is the 8CR13MOV, I guess. 
they only say that for this knife. They don't say what blade is in this. I could have swore that I remember thinking that the blade material, the, the uh, material in this, the, the steel was softer when I first got it because I felt like it lost its edge quicker. Back then I was paying closer attention to edge retention than I am now. Um, now I'm just, you know, how is it for a thrusting um, scenario with self-defense? Um, I'd say it doesn't even need to be very sharp for that. Um, and it does not need to be very sharp for opening packages in mail. I think a, I think a key will get into most packages. But it is nice to have a sharp knife. Don't get me wrong. Um, one day I'm going to master the art of sharpening and then I may change my perspective. I'll change my bias, I guess. So it looks good. It feels good. We've got plenty of handle to get a hold of. It's comfortable. It feels functional pretty much in every way, really. Um, you feel like if you needed to, you could probably hammer something with that if you needed. The deployment is super smooth. You can, If the knife's already in my hand and I'm opening it, a lot of times I'll just do this. Just use the flipper. Um, of course, you don't have to, you could just flip it. You know, there's the, the flip down and then there's the flip out. You know, you can do that on both of these. This one might need a little cleaning. So, all kinds of ways to open this. You can uh, I don't know, I feel like that's flipping it out, but I, I guess some people will refer to this as flipping it out, and I think I've maybe even been guilty of that myself. So yeah, you can wave it out of your pocket, you can use the flipper here, you can use the thumb stud. There's so many different ways to open this one-handed. Um, I feel like the lock is durable. It's more durable than just a standard liner lock, but How durable? I really don't know. I couldn't tell you how durable it is. I highly doubt it's as durable as something like you'll see on this uh, cold steel um, with this big, thick, heavy triad lock on it. So, uh, how does it compare to my other knives? Well, I had been carrying knives like these forever. I mean, as you can see, this is dated 95. Um, I want to say that I this was a gift. I want to say it was given to me as a replacement because I lost my knife that was just like this. And, um, you yeah, know, this was the style that I used to carry. And it was, again, for... I think I started out as... It started out as kind of a fidget spinner thing. and But then I got a job where I had to open up a lot of packages. A lot, open up a lot of crates and remove shrink wrap and stuff like that. So... It was pretty common for us to carry knives. A lot of guys carried box cutters, but I usually just carried something like this. You know, and it gave us, um, those with what they call ADD or whatever, uh, something to play with. And then I graduated to something with the spring in it, a spring assist. I thought that was the coolest thing. I look back now and I don't really care. In fact, uh, I, that spring will break. And in fact, it's broken in this before. Um, but I graduated, you know, went back and forth between these two knives to this knife. And I can tell you that um, you have quite a bit more knife here in your hands. And I have a scale here somewhere. I believe we have a four inch blade on these guys. Yeah, it's right at four inches. Just shy, like maybe a sixteenth of an inch. It's like a hundred, it's like 99 or 100 millimeters or so. Um, and the, the blade's pretty thick. Looks like the blade is one, two, three, three and a half millimeters. You know, that's almost as thick as this. This is like four, four millimeters. This great big blade. So... 
Um, you may may have noticed that I have a zip tie on this. That's someone um, left a comment about using a zip tie to help you wave your knife out of your pocket. And that's, I'm gonna save this for another video because I've since then evolved my thinking a little bit. I saw where you can actually buy things that you can uh, screw in there that'll give you the wave function. But that'll probably be another video at some point. Um, yeah, I wouldn't believe that that works, but it does. You can wave that out of your pocket. It will catch. But again, that's another another video. So, yeah, this was a big jump for me to go from this to this. And I still remember, I was so excited. I was showing everybody this knife and how awesome it was. And you know, the first thing a lot of people say is, well, you know you got a knife in your hand. That's for sure. Um, is it heavy? I don't think so. Uh, is it too big? I don't think so. Um, I've got a scale here ready to go so I can show how much it weighs. I can't remember how much it weighs. So I've got my scale set to grams, I believe. Yeah. So let's go ahead and start with the, uh, the first one. That's the M21, 175 grams. 184. So, 184. Hmm, that's strange. This knife is almost 10 grams heavier. Hmm. So we got that much more material, that much more mass in this one. It feels the same, but I guess my hands aren't that calibrated to tell the difference between two grams. And where does that compare to this old Kershaw? Um, it doesn't say what it is. Ninety-nine grams. What about the Gerber? The Gerber feels super light. The entire handle is plastic. Excellent knife, though. Excellent knife. I do feel like I can defeat that lock, though. I feel like that's a defeatable lock. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna push it too hard. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that is a, a solid lock. Seventy-five. 238, 263, this is another giant knife that I have. Love this knife. And then there's the old Stiletto uh, by Cold Steel. I have to stop and think about how the lock works. I haven't carried this in a few weeks. Um, by far, my heaviest knife is this guy, I think. Hmm, 265. Yeah, he's still the heaviest knife. And this is almost, this is too heavy. This is where you feel like you got a piece of junk in your hand, but it, I like it. I still like it. Um, uh, AKC F16, I think this is my lightest. So, so anyways, uh, that's that. I just really wanted to get a video out um, talking about the knife and sh showing it and seeing how it looks. This is not a new design. This has definitely been around for a while. I couldn't tell you how long this has been around, but I, and I've seen a lot of variations of different handles, different colors, different um, styles of serration, different tips here. There's um, a lot of them that have the handle kind of come down instead of being circular, kind of dips down and kind of disguises the flipper and then does not have this guy up here. <laughs> I like the Quillians, but maybe some people would rather, um, you know, place their thumb right there. 
rather than deal with that guy being right in the way. I don't know. But I, I like the security it gives me. Um, I like how it feels. I feel like, you know, if I'm jamming this into the throat of a pit bull, uh, that I'm probably um, not going to slip on this. We're not going to slip down and cut my finger off or cut my fingers at all. So, so anyways, not to get so graphic, but that is part of the reason why I think a lot of us carry these knives is for those situations. So, um, I guess that's really just about it. Uh, I don't think I can say a whole lot more. Um, I'm very surprised that more people don't know about or and or carry these knives. I want to say that CRKT has these on their website for like a hundred bucks now. I could have swore that they were more like 140 back in the day. And I also could have swore that walmart.com sold them for like 40 to 60 bucks or something. And I don't know. These are great little knives. There's the, the fact that it's that it's completely black compared to, I don't know, a knife that pretends to be black but has a lot of shine to it. You know, we've got some of these other knives. I can't stand this shiny metal. I mean, in a way, it looks cool, but at the same time, it gives off a reflective a reflection. It can um, show your can, can show your cards here with the size of this. And I realized that for some people that might be a selling point. They like how it looks. And I guess I would rather not be able to see anything. I don't want um, a reflection of this knife to catch someone's attention. If I feel like someone's about to attack me, um, I would like for them to not know that I've got this ready to go until it's too late for them. Um, cause if they see this, they may pull a gun. I don't know. Or maybe they'll pull something similar and then we got a real bad situation. But if I'm already taking, if I'm already taking hits or a dog's already latched on, I mean, I guess the dog doesn't care about the shine. Dogs don't understand this, these knives, these bladed edged weapons, but I don't know. I just wish they wouldn't put these big, big shiny blades on there. Big blades are cool, but the shiny, the shine part, I'm not a big fan of. So I think that's about it. I think that's about all I can really say. Um, you know, and as, I, as I've as i said, this is 10 to 12 years of use. It wasn't until recently that I started getting into these OTFs and then these bigger um, folding knives. So these have been my main knives really for like the last decade and they deserve a little bit of recognition, I think. So, I don't know. I guess that's uh, really all I got for now. And uh, so, yep, that's all I got.